Greetings, Benjamin J from Ben's Trains with another in the series, in front of the camera for a change. Anyway, want to do a quick video. This is what I do for a living. I repair antique phonographs. Now, this is a tinfoil phonograph. When Edison invented the phonograph in 1877, this is what he invented. The uh, machine actually recorded sound on tin foil. Now, tin foil is no longer available, so I'm recording on aluminum foil duct tape. You can buy this at Menards. Anyway, the basis of this machine, as you can see, it is a threaded mandrel attached to a threaded rod. Now, the mandrel has the same number of grooves as these threads. So, the basis of this machine is you put a piece of foil on this machine and you set the stylus to go between the threads and as you speak sound waves are actually embossed into the surface of aluminum foil. This is called a tin foil phonograph of course. Now unlike modern recordings, uh, modern disc recordings are laterally recorded where the needle moves back and forth and the sound waves are stored in the sides of the grooves. This is a vertical recording where the uh, embossing point is moving up and down like a sewing machine and the sound waves are embossed into the bottom of the groove. So, just wanted to do a quick video. Now this machine is going to the National Mu Museum of South Korea and it got here a few days ago, of course it didn't work and uh, I spent, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours working on this. So it's up and running and recording. So I uh, just wanted to do a quick video. Very few people have actually seen a tin foil phonograph and virtually no one has actually seen one in operation and heard the resulting recording. So basically what I'm going to do is take a piece of this tin foil, or this aluminum foil tape, and uh, put it on this mandrel and the nice thing about this uh, tape, of course, is that it has an adhesive on it. So you can just stick this to the mandrel. And it's really difficult to get this on here straight. But uh, I'll do the best I can. And so you just basically put this on the machine and then with your thumb burnish the tape down to the surface. So it's nice and taut. Of course, you don't want any wrinkles or um, problems in this foil. You want it as flat as possible. All right, coming up to the overlap. And there we are. Now you see, it is off about an eighth of an inch on this side. But that's more than good enough. It has uh, plenty of surface force to record on. So you just take your thumb and burnish this tape down to the mandrel, make sure it's nice and flat, no wrinkles. Very good. Now we're going to rewind this mandrel and we're going to line up our recording stylus. There we go. Okay. So now the sound box. This is really, really simple. It's a steel diaphragm captured between two cork gaskets. And on this side, there is an embossing point. Uh, it's basically a uh, sharp piece of steel, kind of like a needle, but it's rounded on the end rather than being pointed. You don't want to uh, cut through this foil. We just want to indent this groove and capture the sound waves. Now when Edison invented this machine in 1877, the very first recording in the history of the world, this had never been done before, the very first thing he recorded was Mary had a little lamb. So we're going to replicate that original recording on this machine. Now I've added a small paper cone to the original horn just to make it a bit more efficient. So, we get everything lined up. The machine is ready to record. This is all acoustic, of course. So, without further ado, 
This is the original recording that Edison made in 1877. Mary had a little lamb. Hello, hello, hello. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Ha, ha, ha. All right, so now we rewind the mandrel to the beginning. Reposition our stylus. It's really difficult to see this. All right. Here's our recording. So, the 1877 tin foil phonograph, the first machine in the history of the world to actually record and reproduce sound. So, anyway, with a careful uh, preparation and adjustment, you can make much better recordings. I just got this uh, repaired, and uh, today, in fact, so I've only made a few recordings on it. So the adjustments are incredibly small and they have to be extremely precise. So you notice there's two pivots on either side of the sound box. So you have to adjust the sound box left and right to make sure that embossing point is centered between the grooves on this mandrel. And then you have to adjust the depth of the uh, embossing point so you don't go too deep and tear through the uh, uh, foil or not deep enough so you're not indenting it to get a good recording. But in any case, it takes a lot of preparation. But uh, as I said, I wanted to do a video. Very few people have ever seen a tinfoil phonograph and literally no one has ever seen or heard one in operation. So, just a quick video. So I repair these uh, tinfoil phonographs for museums. I also repair uh, Edison phonographs, uh, uh, wax cylinder phonographs. So it's really interesting. It's a lot of fun. No one does it. I mean, literally, no one does this. Uh, like I said, very few people have ever even seen a tinfoil phonograph. So it's a really, really basic machine, but it is historic. This is the first machine in the history of the world that could actually record and reproduce sound. So in any case, I just wanted to do a quick video on this. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email, benstrains at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.